channel that we cast with our technology and we uh, give the load whatever you shown in the full scale testing uh, and is in plane and out of plane for the earthquake so is it okay or uh, we have to go for the full scale testing yeah if i understand right you said yours is a cast in situ uh, technology mm -hmm. and uh, you would uh, you are doing some testing of components and you are qualifying the components for their uh, mm -hmm. level of uh, capacity both load and deformation mm -hmm. what what generally happens is that uh, individual components are very strong and very good mm -hmm. the key is the key is always the relationship between the components that comes into focus during earthquakes Mm -hmm. uh, and that is why uh, it is recommended that you should do at least a limited number of uh, tests for uh, uh, full scale tests uh, for you to get confidence as to actually what will be the load parts where damage will concentrate and you can improve your design based on that actually. Okay, sir. So yeah. what we are doing, we are doing a, a wall uh, height uh, similar in the construction. Uh, the, we casted the wall at the height of three meter. And then applied a perpendicular load and the in plane and out of plane. Yeah. It is the jack that is shown in the your picture of the full yeah. scale. Yeah. So so what, the, uh -huh. yeah. What happens is when you take a single wall, you have to hold it. You are changing the boundary conditions. Okay. When you do full scale testing, you don't hold that wall. You make okay. the loads come through the other adjoining structural elements as would happen naturally in a structure. And okay. that is the reason why we are suggesting because if you make a three, three meter wall and hold it at the top and bottom, you're mm -hmm. actually causing additional constraints which are possibly not there in the real structure. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir, for your guideline. Mm -hmm. And sir, could yes, you sir, provide your number also so we can discuss with you? Uh, yeah, you can send me an email. You have my email address, cvrm at IIT. IIT Madras ka website mein hai. You can send Achha, me. Sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. Sir, sir, this is Pradeep Gupta. G G uh, Gupta sir. Gupta from Nikhilodi uh, Ladakh. G G. Uh, here I have been given the responsibility for uh, construction buildings in Ladakh, uh, which comes under uh, the zone four. There the problem is that uh, it, here the cost is very difficult to do. They have limited working time and. Uh, uh, Different problems in a cold climatic condition, uh, we can go for a pre cast construction over here. And the buildings and here are plus two or three plus three. My question is uh, very simple that given a choice, I should go for a pre engineered steel buildings or a pre cast concrete structures, which okay. is more monolithic. Joints of which buildings are considered to be more monolithic. Although I understand that the that, that the cast is to concrete, the joints are best. They are perfect. But there I have I cannot work uh, due to uh, that uh, shortage of time and the extremely cold climate. So please please guide me go for a pre engineered building or a pre uh, or a pre cast uh, concrete sector. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, the question about uh, pre-engineered versus cast in situ. Uh, very clearly, one thing I will talk about pre-engineered first. When you look at a pre-engineered uh, structure, the beams are not going to be anywhere near a normal beam. They are much, much smaller in cross-section and much more, I would say, fragile in their connections within the member as well as between the member uh, between the beam and the column also. So what is happening is, since the cross-section is very small, it has been economized for gravity conditions and not for seismic conditions. The load capacity, the plastic moment that that beam section can carry is very small. As a consequence, the lateral resistance of the whole building will be very small because ultimately we want damage only in the beam. If the beam can carry one, then the building will carry five. But if the beam can carry 10, the building will carry 50. So we need to worry about the fact that these are very, very frail, fragile elements used as beam members. For example, four angles back to back uh, and you are running a reinforcement bar as the web of that beam. These are OK for construction, temporary construction supports, form work and all that. 
But when you come to real buildings, uh, if it was so true that uh, you can construct for seismic areas, pre-engineered buildings, the whole world would have done it by now. Japan would have finished off all their construction by now. It is exciting to see light structures, low material structures in seismic areas, but there is also a limit to how low you can go. Very clearly right now, the pre-engineered constructions are falling below the line of acceptable safety. And so we have to be very, very careful in pre-engineered today. They, none of them have been tested either in sub-assemblage or in full scale in this country. And without that, if you are entering into without a standard for it, it will be really embarrassing. When I say standard, I'm talking only of seismic standards. If other standards are there, the gravity standards don't count here. 80% of population is going to be staying in seismic zones 3, 4, and 5. And the news ahead is that the hazard levels also will increase. We are looking at the revised seismic zone map. It should come out this year. And we are seeing that the hazard levels are going up because they have been underestimated last time. In Himalayas, 1897, Assam earthquake said the boulders were lifted up. That means gravity, the acceleration was more than 1G. Boulders were thrown up vertically. And we are estimating a value of 0.36 in our design standard. And that is why I'm saying, please, let us be very, very careful when we look at new technologies, test them, and then build confidence in yourself first, and then only place the product in the market for the safety of the people of India. That sir, is my, sir, my question. My choice of a pre, pre thing, uh, should I go for a structure or a concrete? Now the second question is steel versus concrete, right? Yes. Yeah, fine, very good. The steel concrete comparison is very straightforward. Depends on the skill of the welder, depends on the skill of the designer. Steel structure can be good or bad. Concrete structure depends on the designer detailing and a site bar bending and bar placing schedule. Concrete can be good or bad. So today, Internationally, both structures are used, steel and concrete, and standards are there for both. Both can be made ductile, but that happens in international environment because they have a techno-legal regime in which the engineers are, are put through a competence test, and then there is a municipal corporation which checks all your designs before approving it. It's a third-party independent peer review, which is absent in India. And that is the reason why I'm being very careful here. When we look at new technologies, let us only propose those technologies which we have seen through our eyes, tested, and seen how it will behave during this extreme. Sir, sir, I'm asking you the joint about the cause. I have problem of non monolithic joint. So, given the two structure, what should what should I prefer from the joint point of view from the monolithic? As of now, none of them. I'm being very blunt because I tried to give you indirect answer. You're not taking. I'll give you a direct answer. You have not tested any of them. You can't build any of them. Because there are analytical work alone does not make a structure safe. And without a standard, you cannot design a structure in this country. BM Act, Disaster Management Act, asks you to make sure that the structures are earthquake resistant. Sir, and the root, no, no, the root of making earthquake resistance is either with the help of standards and peer review or full scale testing, standards peer review. Sir, that I am not disputing. I am not disputing that the structures should not be tested. Both structures require testing. That is, there is, there is no Sir, both that. structures can that be made earthquake resistant only through testing and improving the technology. I will not choose left eye versus right eye in this country. We have done that so far and we have only got the left eye so much of concrete structures, no steel structures. That's not proper. Country should have balanced view for both of them. Structural steel has to grow, cause uh, reinforced concrete has to grow, structural concrete has to grow. Both of them have to grow. There is no correct answer here. No, no country will tell you that steel structures are better than concrete structures or vice versa. No country will tell you. What we are looking at is, <laughs> depending on the project, sometimes steel structures become viable in that project, sometimes concrete structures become viable. It is right. not that there are clean answers for this question. It's not possible. 
सर आई हैव वन मोर क्वेश्चन फॉर यू हाउ यू गिवन अ वेरी गुड प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन अर्थ क्वेक एंड सो मेनी पॉइंट यू कवर a dead weight of the building if the weight is increased it will impact the earthquake forces or how it's behave yeah very simple very simple you go to airport it will be excess baggage you go to doctor it is excess baggage you go to earthquake it is saying excess baggage everywhere mass is a problem mass more problem. the mass more is the trouble for us everywhere so in earthquake also you are supposed to reduce the mass as much as possible so sir okay. sir in concrete nowadays there is a foam concrete is available and normal concrete is available yeah foam concrete should not be used for structural members structure member okay sir it's clear not for structural members only for your partition walls and infills here and there uh, which are not coming in the path of this lateral resistance you can use foam concrete but not for structural purposes okay sir that that's clarify my uh, point Ji. sir thank you very much ji ji I can't hear, sir. I can't I hear you. Your voice नहीं आ रही है ठीक से. Sir, I am Ranjit Singh from CPWD. Yes, sir. Sir, I have a small question. Now, this fully scale testing जी. appears from your uh, presentation. कि apart from the requirement as per given in the portal requirement. we have to test the new technology as per the full scale testing also and not only that it appears that even the conventional system also that should be subjected to the full scale testing is this provision is the part of our codal seismic codal requirement or we are going to make it as a requirement in the seismic code okay for conventional cast in situ this is not a requirement and i don't see that this will come as a requirement the way we are doing it is we are going by international comparisons of various performance of uh, such structures elsewhere in the other countries during earthquakes and saying whether this is acceptable to us or not for example mexico city earthquake in 2017 66% of the buildings that fell down were flat slab buildings okay so we have to learn something from that and we don't have to rediscover the same newspaper headline in india in the next earthquake 66% of the buildings were flat slab buildings we don't want to rediscover so for classical traditional in situ construction we have to learn from other countries as far as new technologies are concerned full scale testing is going to be the route for us because we have not developed standards if we had developed standards we would have done a rigorous set of tests for example those two programs that i talked about the safe and the press uh, safe cast and press international programs we haven't done any of that program this is the occasion actually when cpwd is looking for new technologies we have to go through a formal program of testing and then come up with clean answers see i don't expect 100 uh, technologies to be approved by I expect by five technologies three technologies this year two tomorrow next year another two next year on a small ramp if you test te technologies and then get them to be approved we are in a much better shape in five years we'll be in a good shape but to approve all technologies without any standard and without any testing will be an embarrassment for government i would personally not want the three lion symbol on any of those technologies which are built with government of india money especially for housing for masses or mass housing both of them uh, sir i am pradeep gar from cpwd yes sir uh, namaskar uh, sir one question which is critical for our precast construction is the Joint, sir. The, yes. the whole contention is on the joint, sir. G. So do uh, like we don't have like we have our uh, joint detailing for ductile detailing. We have for the cast in situ construction, sir. Do we have documents prepared by IIT or any of the professional institutions which gives us knowledge of the joints to be done for precast uh, concrete structure, sir? Which we can incorporate in our proposal for new technologies in CPWD elsewhere, sir. Yeah. As of now. there were limited tests done in iit kanpur on precast construction and uh, on component cbri had done in the 70s and later on in a collaborative project we had used those precast components and done a single story construction at uh, cbri tested for lateral actions but i would think that the number of tests is too few for us to make a clean recommendation today itself there are some obvious knows that we have learned from that but the exact design of the joints 
is yet to be confirmed there. The reason why that has happened is that each uh, construction company, each uh, technology provider comes up with a different way of connecting the walls and the slab and the beams and columns. And that is why it is uh, uh, important that we have a huddle of all the companies coming together and come up with some type typical <clears throat> joints and test those typical joints so that all of them can use the outcome of such a study. Okay, sir, uh, can I, sir, I am Rajesh Bangla. Sir, sir, I am Praveen Agrawal. I want uh, to ask, sir. Rajesh, sir, Praveen, sir. Regarding this precast construction, sir, now there is, sir, regarding this precast RCC construction, uh, as you told that there is no Indian standards codes are available except for recommending that the precast construction has also to be designed considering it the monolithic construction. But in real sense, the behavior of both the two is different. So, as on that, which country has specified norms or standards which are more accurate to be applicable in Indian context, whether it is New Zealand code or some other country code, which do reflect the Indian conditions and till the time the Indian codes are developed, we can ad adopt that? Yeah. So, so sir, uh, what, uh, I am Rajesh Banga, Chief Engineer, CPWD from Varanasi. I will also put the same question and maybe you can reply the two questions in one go. Gee. So, the question is that there is no denial that the time tested construction is all uh, the normal construction which we have confidence on but the uh, growing population and the uh, the growth of our economy is putting a pressure on all of us that governments are putting uh, we, have, we are finding no way but to have something for faster construction and that is why we are looking at new technologies so uh, also, there is no denial to the fact that full scale testing is required. My question is that is it is there a way that uh, these some of these technologies have been fully tested in Western countries, advanced countries, and India can simply copy that rather than wasting time again and again on the testing? Is there a way out? Of it? Yeah. So um, both of you have raised the center point of the today's meeting. Um, precast constructions uh, will have to be. Um, taken forward if we have to do faster. Agreed. The question is that I borrow, let us say Precast Concrete Institute in America is the one that is a leader in precast construction. They have standards for it and their country has admitted their standards for their use. But remember one point that their country has competent engineers verified every three years through an examination and they have third party peer review in every municipal corporation before design is approved. I bring that standard, I go ahead, but I don't have competent engineers and I don't have uh, a third party peer review. My results will be different from their result. Right. My suggestion is bring that standard, sit down here, identify two, three technologies, quickly do the test for those two, three technologies, create a document of your own, and then take it forward. Every time, remember, ladders are not going to be sustainable. Suddenly you come up in 2022 and say, I want to use uh, the international standard to go ahead for construction. Not going to happen. You have to dig, they have to till the land, sow the seed, put the water and reap the harvest later on. It takes time. Technology For example, many of the countries that use precast constructions don't have seismic shaking at all as a worry for them. And if we borrow their country's documents, we will be in trouble. But I'm not suggesting that. I'm use, saying that let's use America's Precast Concrete Institute or New Zealand's or Japan's documents, no problem. But I would say because our technolegal regime is very poor, I want some tests to be done here and see whether we can create those joints and junctions here if we can can we then put a high quality control, quality assurance requirement for the use of such structures after testing? I want to do at least a baseline series of tests. You can put it on fast track. Two labs are already waiting for so many years. We can get them to do this test for you as a national priority. They are national institutes only. Not a worry. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. G. Good morning, sir. This is Gigi. Yogesh Kardare. Uh, I would like to highlight certain takeaway points from this uh, very good discussion. The first and foremost thing is that we cannot discriminate between 
any technology as far as essentiality of the testing is concerned. May it be conventional cast in situ, may it be uh, steel structure, may it be precast, may it be partial precast. That is the first and foremost thing. Why so? Particularly because the first uh, photographs which you uh, indicated, rather which you covered in your uh, discussion, were all pertaining to, majority of them were pertaining to cast in situ buildings built in Ahmedabad, that is particularly zone 3. Not Ahmedabad, all over Kutch. All, all over Kutch, all over Kutch. All over Kutch. All over Kutch. The second, uh, recently, even for gravity loading, we have two incidences happened at Gurgram. The building structures were uh, almost collapsed, I would say. So the necessity of testing is must, may, may it be whatever may be the technology. So also, whether it is zone 3, zone 4 or zone 5, the testing is mandatory. That is what is the takeaway. Further to that, the testing, the necessity of testing is basically the, the hypothesis which has been made in the design at the time of design has to be ascertained through the testing. Now the design will perform or design can perform only if the requisite skill set are available to replicate that technology. So simply by importing technology from US or European country without having the skill set in India, it won't be appropriate to replicate that technology for reproduction on a mass scale. So the necessity of the testing is not only because the technology is new, but is also essential because the even if the said technology is being used by unskilled or so-called inexperienced hand, then we have to have the testing carried out. So this is what I could gather from the discussion. And I also thank CPWD for creating this platform to create awareness and understanding amongst all stakeholders. Thank you, Kajal sir. Next time I have to write a summary of a thesis, I'll give it to you. Up, you can make the summary so nicely again. Thank you, thank you, sir. <laughs> so nice of you. <laughs> uh, so can we get back to here? Have 15 minutes are over. I think we start with the proceed with the program. So, so sir, we will now move on to our next. Uh, so what is next now? Okay. So, uh, on hand Builders Association of India, Kitra, sir. Who is there from Builders Association of India? The workshop. Anybody from Builders Association of India? The workshop. Apparently, nobody is from Builders Association of India. Okay, then next, who's the next speaker? Move on. Now, I, I request technology providers to uh, give their comments and uh, first uh, kindly introduce yourself and then uh, give your comments. Over to technology providers. Yeah, good morning. This is Yogesh Kazal from BG Shirke Construction Technology Private Limited. Uh, my comment, I already covered those comments after uh, the presentation, had a very good presentation and insight given by Professor Dr. C. V. R. Murthy. I would like to emphasize